So, lesson two. Today we're going to look at a few things. We're going to start off looking at infinitives again. Look at the bare infinitive and the two infinitive again, and talk a little bit more about those. So, here we have some conjugated tenses um, with these verbs, play, run, swim. There are two infinitives, to play, to run, to swim. You get constructions like make and play with the bear, I want to play with the to infinitive. And these are interesting constructions, and you'll see the to infinitive gets some interesting uses. So here we have purpose uses, and looking into the future, I am about to see her, I go to please you. These are uses that you get with the to infinitive, leaving the bare infinitive relegated to some specific uses. And this can all be a little bit confusing when you try and learn another language. Now, the bare infinitive was seen a little bit more in Elizabethan English, such as this example. Um, this is a line from Othello by Othello. Thou hadst been better, have been born a dog. Now, don't worry about that first clause. Let's look at the second clause. Today, a construction like that would be to have been born a dog. And like I said, um, the first clause, we're going to get to that, touch upon it a little bit in a moment, but um, it's important to recognize the bare infinitive being used a little bit more in Elizabethan English. So we also mentioned the full verb need and the modal need. The modal need is something of a fragmentary module, but modules are in fact, well, just special in the fact that they cannot have more than two parts. In a normal verb you have what are called principal parts. English, for example, has three, such as sing, sang, sung, or play, played, played. Uh, the parts needed in order to form any conjugated form or verbals, those are principal parts. Uh, verbals are things like infinitives and um, participles. So, the Big Bad Five modules have, as seen before, um, except for must, a present and a preterite form. But you'll notice that I actually wrote preterite slash subjunctive form. Thus is a good way of describing the second forms. Before Shakespeare's time, in Middle English, you had modules, but they acted differently. Changes happened in Shakespeare's own time, which involved the subject, subjunctive mood uh, giving rise to um, them being things that we really can describe like this. So the subjunctive of English is something I'm briefly going to look into now. We're going to look back at it again and again and again as we go down the line. I mean, when you learn about the English modal system, you undoubtedly learn about the subjunctive, too. The subjunctive has to do with unreal reality, or with supporting reality, as I call it. And, well, you know, I could go on and on and on about it, and I will go on and on and on about it in later videos. Um, but now, uh, you mustn't listen to people. I have to say this right now. You mustn't listen to people, to anybody, even in authority positions saying to you something along the lines of the English subjunctive being fragmentary or unimportant. It's essential to our language as my knees are to my legs. Uh, hearing something like that, it's really a load of crap. I mean, the thing is, when somebody thinks of the English subjunctive today, um, they often think of, uh, perhaps, the subjunctive were. This is because the first and third persons of the verb to be have a different form in the uh, subjunctive past than the indicative past. But so what? If I had a book is just as much of a subjunctive construction if, if, as if I were a book. Well, as silly as it is to say something like that. Um, but anyways, uh, also saying if I was as painful as it is for a linguist to hear is just really only lining up the forms and really not doing anything different if you say if I was than if I were. It's incorrect. Um, well, it's incorrect to a linguist. But anyways, let's get on here. The subjunctive of English today has seen its constructions modulized, which is why, had he been a character written today, Othello would have said, Thou wouldst have been better to have been born a dog. Well, actually, really, It'd be more like you would have been better to have been born a dog. So let's take a look at some forms here, shall we? Here is the modal will in Elizabethan English. We have these forms here, wilt and wouldst, when we conjugate. Now, of course, today, without thou, 
we don't have these forms, wilt and wouldst, and thinkest and shouldst and other things. If you don't have thou, you don't have the grammar to go with it, the forms that go with it, with verbs. Now, you may also see wouldest, especially in the Bible, mostly just in the Bible. You will really mostly see only the contracted wouldst and other things, and shouldst. Now, um, with the preterites, you see these wouldst and shouldst. You will also see them being written in contracted forms for the singulars always. There is no will it or anything like that, or willest. You may also see it not written in the contracted form, but a meter of a play or poem demanding that you actually do lose a syllable. This business of thinkest versus thinkst, wouldest versus wouldst, will be discussed in later videos. If you were transported back in time, actually, you would hear thinkest in certain rhythms of speech. To muddy all this, people, when pronouncing the Bibles, you know, uncontracted forms, really would have just contracted them when reading it aloud to themselves. There is a lot to this. And you're going to see a lot of apostrophes all over the place in Elizabethan English. And we'll get into them, a lot of them, not just the uh, endings of the second person singular. We will also touch upon when a single person was called thou and when um, that single person was called you, which is part of the TV system that English had for a while. This TV system, other languages have it, having to do with the relationship between two people when deciding whether they called each other uh, thou, the second person singular, grammatically, or you, which is grammatically plural. This is something that arises in a lot of languages. Of course, the nominative um, for you, which was ye, had already been lost by Shakespeare's time. We have, of course, abandoned the TV system completely today. Today, you just say you for one person always. Well, that's not actually quite totally true, but that's another story. When I say touch upon, I really just mean touch. This is a subject for a whole paper. So, anyways, you're conjugating these verbs and you're seeing these forms, second person singular. Now you see these modules and you see that there's no third person singular, even in Shakespeare's time. It has to do with how modules develop which is something I might get into in some other video some other time. A whole series on modal auxiliaries in Old English. So this was quite a bit to take in in one lesson, I realize that, but we're going to get into modules quite a bit. We're going to really dissect them, we're going to look at the history of them, we're going to probably touch upon um, modules, um, their very, very, very earliest origins, but um, that could be a whole other video series, modules in um, Middle English, and in fact, their origins in Old English. But um, to continue with modules in Shakespearean English, you'll be able to truly understand Shakespeare a lot better. Um, you'll be able to understand other pieces of literature from Shakespeare's time until today, and you'll be able to understand your own English that you yourself speak today a lot better. Um, final notes, also, we're going to look at things like had rather, besides just had better, which is going to be interesting. And um, uh, finally, you do have uh, this uh, this verb ought, and it's not quite a module right now. It's uh, you can't say um, uh, ought go. You say ought to go. You have the the two infinitive after ought. Now ought is a preterative present, and the modules actually develop from preterite presence in Old English, and um, the preterative present ought, uh, well, we'll talk about where it came from, but um, it, uh, it is a preterative present that is sort of a creation, similar to the creation of uh, modules.